What good folks it's Darktree19 and welcome back to another what if and I believe this is what if Naruto was a scion part 4 so if you want another part like, comment, subscribe and share to your friends but besides all that enjoy the video chapter 7. Hinata gas trying to fight through pain staring down her cousin after being knocked down a fourth time. Her vision no longer enhanced by her Byakugan as her chakra pathways were under extreme duress. So at first the light burning sensation that started at her fingertips while annoying didn't really compare to the rest of the pain she was in. But that rapidly changed as the burning sensation skyrocketed from just her fingertips to every place on her body and the sensation intensified. Dropping to her knees clutching at her shoulders she began to moan she was so distracted by her own pain that she didn't hear her future sister wife going through the same problem. Proctor something is happening to Hinata, Neji stated sounding confused. Her chakra is spiking. She's not the only one Haruno-san is doing the same. Hayate nodded watching and hearing as both girls started to scream in agony. 30. Naruto unsure what was happening and torn between jumping down to help Hinata or look after Sakura. In the end he created a shadow clone to jump down and check on the Hyuga heiress as the proctor called the match in Neji's favor mostly to get Hinata medical attention. Naruto kneeled down next Sakura, Sakura-chan can you hear me? And Naruto, I feel like my body is on fire what's going on? The rosette-haired girl gasped. Her eyes rolled back as she promptly passed out from the pain. No sooner had she passed out the transformation began. Naruto could see the major and minor muscles in Sakura's arms coil and tighten then relax, her milky pink hair slowly began to dark into a more of a bright red and then it began to spike making her look a bit more wild looking. Below clone Naruto watched as the same thing started happening to Hinata, her short bluish black hair, turned an almost pitch black, got longer slightly shoulder length and start spiking in all directions. For both the clone and the original thought the girls looked sexier like this. The clone scooped Hinata into his arms bridal fashion the same could be said for the original as he picked up Sakura. Both girls snuggled closer to their prospective Naruto as the medic nin escorted the orange-haired scion and his clone to the infirmary. 30. The lead medic nin worked over the two girls feverishly while Naruto stayed in the room but out of the way. The injuries Hinata sustained in the fight with Neji before the incident occurred had been aggravated and made worse so she had been the main priority, Sakura was simply rendered unconscious by whatever had occurred. I don't understand this, Lady Hinata's genetic structure has been rewritten nothing about her is the same genetically aside from the Byakugan to her father or sister, how can this be possible? What do you mean? Naruto asked. If I had to guess she's not human anymore, the medic nin explained then taking a blood sample from Sakura and examined it. The woman frowned sitting back crossing her arms, genetic markers have the same six additional tags but a different genetic code, they're from the same species just different people. Um, Naruto looked lost and confused as well as worried. A strange high-pitched whine appeared behind them, they are scions like Yugaki, a deep voice stated causing the medic Nin and Naruto to turn. Dressed in a blue tank top and a blue baggy pants with wild hair sprouting from a radically receding hairline, next to him was a man dressed in orange and blue and had hair that looked like a palm tree. V Vegeta Oji-san? Naruto blinked. How did you get here, weren't you in your home dimension? Yes, the Scion Prince tossed a capsule the size of the pinky finger to Naruto who caught it. What happened to your woman? We're going through the tuning exam she got pretty beat up before something weird happened, she and Sakura-chan started screaming and Sakura-chan said she felt like her body was on fire, now you said she's a Scion. What did you do? Naruto explained in detail the medic nin looking both confused at who these two strange men were and how Naruto knew them. As I said, they are now scions, I use the Dragon Balls first to give in the location to this dimension so I can give you that capsule inside is something we'll discuss more in detail later, the second wish I should have worded a bit more carefully, Vegeta frowned. Goku chuckled, he wished that every scion who had mates, that the mates get turned into scions, his chuckle turned into a frown, are they alright, he gestured to the two unconscious girls. One is suffering from fatigue done from this wish as for the other, the stress from the transformation combined with the damage from her fight is not doing her body any favors, the medic nin explained. Kakarot did you bring any senzu beans? Vegeta asked. The naive hero dug into the front of his shirt produced a small brown sack, never trained without them, pulling on the drawstrings and pulled out a small green kidney shaped bean. Um, can she chew or swallow? What good will that bean do? The medic nin asked skeptically. It has healing properties, woman. She chews and swallows at her injuries no matter how severe will be healed, Vegeta smirked slightly. Both girls will get a sizable Zenkai boost from this, I count you as lucky Gaki, he stated shifting his gaze to the orange-haired boy. 
Naruto watched as Goku gently put the small bean into Hinata's mouth then used his hands to grind the bean between Hinata's teeth before holding the girl's nose forcing her to swallow a second later Hinata straight up her injuries vanished and her eyes wide looking around. W where am I? Naruto sat down next to her, you're in the infirmary you collapsed during your fight with Neji, he watched the girl's face fall. Hey, he gently touched her chin bringing her face and eyes to meet his. Don't be ashamed you fought well and you didn't really lose by knockout you were incapacitated by an unforeseen circumstance, Naruto winced. Why I think I hurt myself. They all heard a faint chuckle, using three big words in a single sentence must have hurt, Naruto-kun, Naruto turned to see Sakura trying to sit up but feeling so weak, Goku handed her a bean. Raising an eyebrow looking at the orange clad elder scion, what's this? Eat it, it'll fix you up, Naruto explained. With a shrug Sakura did just that biting into the bean chewing it making a face before swallowing the moment it went down her throat its power activated and all the fatigue vanished. Wow what is that? The rosette haired girl asked. It's called a senzu bean, it's grown at the top of Karin's tower in our dimension, Vegeta replied crossing his arms. Now that they are feeling better I like to discuss to the Gaki and his mates why I came here, if you want woman you can have the Gaki's parents present since I know he is probably your village's leader again. The medic nin felt offended but said nothing leaving, a few minutes later Minato, Kushina, and Mikado appeared. Vegeta raised an eyebrow taking a light sniff, if I didn't know better Minato I'd say you were half scion two mates, like your son I am impressed. Minato blushed rubbing the back of his head, blame Kushina was her decision. Indeed, the scion prince smirked looking at the red-headed woman with a newfound respect. The woman in question smiled slyly at her husband putting both her hands behind her head trying and failing to look innocent. Gaki you have my knowledge so you know how to work a hoi poi capsule I take it. Naruto nods pulling out the capsule in question and pushed the top, tossing it in the air a huge explosion of smoke clear sitting in pristine condition on the ground was a strange device with a 9 inch screen and a flat microphone. What is that? Naruto asked. Bulma said it's an interdimensional communicator, this way you and I can communicate across dimensions and now that Kakarot knows where you home dimension is we can come here using his instant transmission technique. The Scion Prince explained. Naruto picked it up looking it over before sitting it on the desk, wow this is really cool, he then paused turning and running up to Goku. Can I learn that instant transmission jutsu oh, oh, and can you train me I'll bet it'll be really awesome. The naive heroic Scion chuckled, well I like your enthusiasm that's for sure, but don't you need permission from your parents first or something. Oh right, Naruto zipped over to his parents and his godmother performing the sad eyes jutsu, can I please? Kushina jumped back in shock. Ah. Who taught you that jutsu? Um, I think I saw Ino-chan use it once on her dad, I thought was really cool how he buckled under it so I asked Ino-chan to teach me, Naruto scratched his cheek in thought. Come to think of it, that was probably the only time Ino-chan was ever nice to me. Sakura looked down sadly the same could be said for Hinata as both missed a lot of opportunities or in Sakura's case squandered opportunities to get to know the boy both coming to love more and more with each passing day. Well I suppose but only if we can teach you to, I'm pretty sure most of what we gave you is pretty jumbled in that head of yours, Minato stated. The problem is who's going to train you for the entire month leading up to the finals, oh the prelims are done by the way, and your numbered was picked, you'll be in the first match against Neji. The fourth Hokage stated watching his son nod. Humph, why don't we all train him and his women, Vegeta stated. We each take turns. Goku smiled, that's right the hyperbolic time chamber. That's awesome Vegeta with the amount time we can get, I'm sure all three will master what we can teach them. Mikado raised a hand, what is this time chamber? It's a room where a person can get a year's worth of training in a single day, Vegeta crossed his arms pursing his lips in thought, Gaki any thoughts on how to train your women? We have names you know, Sakura growled. And we're not his, we are our own persons. This made the scion smirk, I see why you like the red haired one, Gaki. She reminds me of Bulma. Goku chuckled sadly, wish Go Ten and Trunks would find girlfriends like her. The scion prince rubbed his chin in thought. Hmm, while this dimension doesn't have much in the way of a challenge you or I, Kakarot this place does have something our dimension lacks. Um, what's that? His naive rival asked. Stronger women, the Gaki's mother and godmother are strong, power level must be at least 1000 for the both of them, Vegeta stated. Kushina pouted, I'm only at a thousand, poopy. Vegeta began to go over what he saw while trapped inside Naruto. I see, you simply do not grasp the full potential of your key. You dilute it instead of harnessing it. Goku looked confused, what does this have to do with Trunks and Goten? Simply Ubaka, this world have females that would be perfect for them, the wishy-washy females of our dimension do not attract our sons. 
Like all scions we want our women to be strong either physically, mentally, or emotionally. Bulma while didn't have physical strength made up for it with her mind, your Chi-Chi, Kakarot was raised by her father to be a warrior so you grew attracted to her through her warrior spirit, and while her father was a fraud, Videl holds a lot traits in common with your Chi-Chi making her ideal for your eldest. Goku nodded getting the gist of what his rival was saying, okay I get it, so you want Goten and Trunks to come here to look for girlfriends. Exactly, Vegeta stated letting loose his first genuine smile ever that wasn't a smirk or a sneer. I have watched that Gaki of mine for three years go through his flavor of the weak bullshit, and it sickens me. With a sigh the orange clad elder Scion nodded, yeah Goten has the same problem, Chi Chi isn't happy about it either. Minato spoke up, we're getting off track here, we were talking about training for Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata. Uh yeah, if you can free a few days sometime in the next month I can take you to Kame's lookout in my dimension and you can each train your son, I can even find people willing to train the girls. I think 18 and Gohan could probably train the bright red haired girl, Gohan knows lots pressure points and healing things while 18 could probably teach her some of her techniques. As for girl in the white coat I bet Piccolo can train her, she has the same feel Gohan had when he was 4 before you and Nappa arrived. Will your pint sized friend help his woman with the feisty one? Vegeta asked smirking at the tick mark appearing above Sakura's right eyebrow. My name is Sakura. The red haired scion growled her aura exploding in bluish white flames. Naruto gently rubbed her shoulders after she calmed down pulling both her and Hinata into an embrace, the poor Hyuga blushing deep red at the contact. Ama I'm sure Krillin will help a bit I doubt Gohan or 18 will really need any, Goku replied. So you, me, and Naruto's parents train him, while Piccolo trains white coat girl, 18 and Gohan train Sakura. H Hinata, the Hyuga spoke up. Hinata then, Goku smiled. Minato nods. I'll let Sarutobi know I'll need him to sit in for me for a few days, but will this instant transmission jutsu work? Goku put two fingers to his forehead and a second later vanished, another second later he reappeared holding an irate blue haired one. Goku Yubaka, what do you think you're doing? Hee <laughs> hee, sorry Bulma just checking to see if my instant transmission worked across dimensions, the orange clad elder Scion explained. The blue haired woman grumbled crossing her arms over her chest. Well I see what Vegeta Oji-san means, she does kind of remind me of Sakura-chan, Naruto chirped up. Shut up, Gaki Vegeta snorts walking up to his wife. What were you doing when Kakarot showed up that got you upset? GGRR. Trying to get my hair to stay down, Bulma snapped reaching up to push her darker blue almost purple colored her down. That wish you made about turning me, Chi Chi, and Videl into scions has given me a case of permanent bad hair day, do you know how hard it is for me to keep my hair looking as good as it does? Not to mention I had go through having my DNA rewritten let me tell you, the blue haired woman flung her hands in the air. It was not pleasant and that's not even the best part. I'm late. To what? Goku asked. My period Yubaka, Bulma shouted then slapped her hands over mouth blushing a deep crimson. Ooh, Goku scratched his head vaguely remembering when Chi Chi told him she had been late. Um, congratulations Bulma. The blue haired side turning to her husband scratching her cheek, I was hoping to tell you a bit more privately. Vegeta stood there stunned for a moment before reaching out and pulling his wife into a hug. I am pleased, Bulma. Wow, that's awesome, Naruto stated. Chapter 8 The Z fighters and spouses, minus Goku were gathered around the foray of Kami's lookout waiting for Goku to bring Naruto, his parents, his godparents, and his future wives from their dimension to the Z fighters dimension. Gohan however frowned a bit, thinking back to two years ago which in Naruto's universe was five days ago. Strange it's like the time between our dimension and Naruto's is shifting almost like two wavelengths trying to sync, we go from a 15 year gap in their world to a 2 year gap in our world. Now everything seems to almost blend together seamlessly how can that be? The eldest of Goku's sons turns and addresses his friends and family detailing this very thing. You're right Gohan this shouldn't be possible, unless time and space are being manipulated in some way, then replied looking confused. But how? That would be us, and let me tell you it wasn't pretty, a cheerful female chirped up causing everyone to turn. Standing there were two strange looking female beings, one was roughly came up everyone's chest with purple skin and orange colored hair, the second woman was of regular height with light blue skin and white flowing hair going almost to the ground, both had black eyes, pointed ears, and wore the robes of the Kais. Hello. The shortest cheered holding up two victory signs. You're such a child, time. The taller of the two stated. The smaller one pouted, I happen to like being carefree, space you should do the same. Why your Supreme Kai's? Den Yep, the shortest smiled. 
I'm the Supreme Kai of time and this is my sister the Supreme Kai of space, and as I said doing what we did to sync space and time so your dimension and of Naruto's dimension can match up wasn't easy. A lot had to change most of the events in Naruto's universe either never happen or will be changed drastically all thanks to Vegeta's unselfish acts. Is it going to be good or bad? Krillin asked. Mostly good and a few things bad, the Supreme Kai of space stated. Most of the events that should have happened in Naruto's universe will never happen, the most recent events surrounding Naruto's Chunin exams will even be changed slightly, the events after that though will be changed drastically, to a point where Naruto will be facing enemies in that world he would have waited 4 years and sacrificing a lot of lives to take care of. Now it'll be a freaking cakewalk, the Kai gave Vegeta an irritated glance. Also thanks a lot for that general wish about the Scion spouses being turned into Scions, you do realize the wish is still active. What do you mean? Bulma asked she was still irritated at her husband for using the dragon to change her DNA but in the long run she felt that it was a benefit, once she had actually asked to start training with her husband something she thought had been a time waster before. While she felt sore afterwards she never felt so energetic now, like she could do more and keep focused, plus the prospects of being able to fly without a vehicle in the future was nice, not to mention according to her husband she'll be able to keep her good looks well into her 80s. It was a general wish he didn't specifically point out individuals he said scions as a whole. This means if Trunks, Gotan, the baby growing inside you, Little Pan, and any children Naruto's wives produce have spouses they will be turned into scions, and the cycle will continue. With that one wish Vegeta has assured the revival of the scions in two different dimensions, which is why my sister and I have pulled some strings with the ultimate Supreme Kai and the Supreme Kai of the multiverse to sync your dimension with Naruto's, the blue-skinned woman rubbed her forehead. What a headache. Vegeta looked dumbfounded at first before shaking his head giving a smirk and crossing his arms over his chest. Interesting but what of our universe's timeline? It slipped into another alternate events version like many others, you may recall future Trunks timeline is still ongoing many of the events that have occurred in your timeline hasn't occurred in his, so much so he's actually working for me, the Supreme Kai of Time explained. There are several others, she taps her lips with a fingernail thinking, one major change is Majin Buu's reincarnation has been stopped until the next generation, something about the ultimate Supreme Kai wanting Pan to grow up around her grandfather plus it'll give her more of a chance to become friends with. The short Kai froze blushing. Oopsie almost gave away the surprise, this caused a collective face fault from the Z fighters sending them all crashing to the ground. The Supreme Kai of Space sighed looking at her sister, well we gave you the reasons why your dimension and Naruto's dimension are now synced, I would also suggest you take up Naruto's offer to attend the tuning exams it'll be beneficial to both sides. With that the two Supreme Kais vanished just as Goku, brought Naruto, his family, an extended family. What? Goku asked looking confused. It's nothing Goku, Piccolo stated. So which one is the one I'll be training? Hinata weakly raised her hand while trying for the 30 time since the last two days to get her hair to lay flat so far no such luck. I I am a r u m Mr. Piccolo. The Namek sighed walking up to the girl, great another Gohan, he smirked. At least I know how to start then. Gohan shook his head, I almost feel sorry for that girl. Why almost? Videl asked shifting Pan to her other shoulder. Well Piccolo was never what I call gentle but when she comes out of the time chamber I guarantee you anything she has been shy about she won't be shy about anymore, Gohan explained. Sakura waited until Hinata and Piccolo went around the corner and into the building, so what she'll come out, kiss Naruto-kun, start wearing less conservative clothing, punch someone when they piss her off if that's possible, and actually talk without stuttering. Bah, there's enough sexual tension in that girl, she won't simply kiss the Gaki, she'll jump him, Vegeta snorted. No he's mine first. Sakura snapped and blushed causing Naruto to smirk and Jiraiya to giggle while writing in his little research book. GGGRRRR. The rosette-haired girl stomped over to the giggling pervert snatching his book away. She then handed it to Mikado who promptly set it on fire with one of her fire jutsu. Thank you. 30. Piccolo watched as Hinata explored the outside of the living area within the time chamber, which was about as empty as a scion's stomach after a major fight. The room was predominantly white, endless white to be exact stretching as far as even Hinata's Byakugan could see. W what a a lonely place, came Hinata's reply. Which is why we'll only spend a day in the real world here, Goku did explain the properties of this room, Piccolo asked. Why yes, H how do we start? Hinata asked. Piccolo pulled out a hoi poi capsule and tossed it out into the middle of the empty space a huge puff of smoke later a large spherical object appeared with a door. Inside is a gravity chamber, for the first 6 months you are going to periodically go from 10 times to 500 times normal gravity, 
He held up a hand stalling Hinata's protests. You aren't human anymore your body will slowly adapt to the increase in gravity to a point that walking around 500 times gravity will feel like you're walking in one times normal. Piccolo quietly pulled out a scroll. In that time you'll memorize these basic martial arts forms for Aikido and Tai Chi. Looking at the scroll Hinata tilted her head questioning, I I don't you understand. Your martial arts is too rigid for you, for your natural grace you need styles that allow you to move and flow like water, I will give you the form of Jeet Kune Do after you've managed to get the basics of these stances, Piccolo crossed his arms noting the girl's hesitance. Your gentle fist technique is based upon a more ridged form of Jeet Kune Do focusing on well-placed strikes to the weak points in your world's chakra network. Tai Chi is about flexibility and flow while Aikido is about misdirection and letting your opponent provide the power to your moves. The true essence of your family style is about flow and misdirection. That's why I stated you need to flow like water, Piccolo paused. In short you need to be like water, if you put water into a cup it becomes the cup, you put it in your canteen it becomes the canteen, water flows but it also crashes, it shapes as well as erodes, do you understand now? He not his eyes sparked at such wonderful philosophy, I understand Piccolo Sensei. 30 outside the time chamber 6 hours and 30. 18 pursed her lips looking down at the gasping girl who she had to agree to train, the girl in her honest opinion sucked. Didn't train, while I like primping keeps Krillin interested I don't make it my sole thing in life. The blonde haired bio android sighed heavily glancing at her co-trainer. Well what you think? Reminds me a lot of Videl, rough around the edges but I see a lot of potential, I'm thinking something along the lines of praying mantis style of Hungar mix it with Wushu and a lot endurance training, Gohan stated adjusting his glasses. Add in a little turtle hermit training, shame the time chamber doesn't have a field to till or something to construct, Krillin adding his two cents and putting his hands behind his head looking down at the girl. Sakura looked at her three trainer with a mixture of horror and confusion, mostly because didn't know the taijutsu styles they listed and the very idea of doing physical labor reminded her a little too much of D-ranked missions. Well she's not a part of the finals, a voice spoke up as Minato walked up, I could arrange for you to take on some farming and construction D-ranked missions after she's done in the time chamber. 18 smirked, that'll work, don't suppose you have a lake with a giant shark? She snickered looking at Sakura's increasingly horrified expression. When she and Krillin first got together the short man explained in detail his initial training with Goku, and the amount of labor-intensive chores they did along with extremely heavy shells strapped to their back. The amount of hell her husband had done when he was a kid made her respect him a bit more. She found him fairly charming and a bit naive but not as much as Goku, she often wondered if her alternate timeline self had killed him herself or did 17 kill him. Something to ask future Trunks if I ever meet him again. She didn't like the thought that could actually harm her husband and she prayed daily that there wasn't some kind of hidden program in her brain lying dormant to do just that. Minato shook his head looking a bit worried at such a comment, no shark why? Krillin snickered. Something Goku and I had to deal with during training with Master Roshi, but if you have a swimming pool or a reasonably large lake that'll work just as well. The blonde-haired Hokage shrugged, there's a large lake about a mile south of Konoha most people use it as a picnic spot. Perfect, after we get into the time chamber and whip Sakura here into shape martial arts wise we'll take her to do those D-ranked missions, Gohan smiled watching Sakura seem to groan long and low at her impending doom. 30. Naruto was both more fortunate and less so, his taskmasters were the two full-blooded scions and his mother as well as his godmother. Little did he know the passing knowledge he acquired would spark a thirst for everything that was seals. After Hinata and Sakura would get their turns at the time chamber Naruto would then get his turns, four days with each trainer. Vegeta was going to make it his mission to get Naruto to transform into a super scion, Goku would teach him the instant transmission, his Kamehameha and the spirit bomb, Kushina told him she would teach him how to understand the information he got from the knowledge on seals, his family's taijutsu and simply to spend time with his mother. Mikito would help refine his already expert elusive skills, help him in his tracking abilities, and stealth. Goku was currently doing an overview of the instant transmission as it was the easiest to do while waiting for Hinata to emerge and Sakura to go in. Basically you have to have been at the area you want to teleport to, and you have to paint a clear picture of it in your mind, the orange-clad scion explained. Naruto had long abandoned his orange jumpsuit to a wear a black outfit similar to Goku's while wearing orange underneath, think Vegito's outfit, a long black cloak similar to his father's with orange flames. We'll go into more details later. Mostly the scary sides. 30. Hinata was crouched gasping for air, the intensity of her training combined with her sensei's unrelenting pressure had been a godsend and the fact her sensei wasn't belittling her abilities or coddling her had made her grow. 
Her muscle tone from the intense gravity from the spherical room made her sleek and agile. Her clothing was in shambles but the color scheme looked nice, purple with a slight gray tone mixed in. Piccolo had given her an outfit similar to his after her shinobi gear had been thrashed by her intense gravity training. Her hair was now down to her mid-back which with her now scion blood made it look like a prickly cactus, her fierce-looking lavender eye glowing in anticipation of leaving the time chamber looking for Naruto and showing how much she had grown. She wanted him more now than she did entering the chamber, the training had brought about a carnal lust in her. I know Sakura will want him first, so I'll take them into that bedroom I spotted on the way in here, rip Sakura-chan's clothing off of her, push Naruto-kun to the bed while giving him a preview of what's to come by making Sakura-chan squirm on my fingers. Hinata licked her lips standing up glancing at the huge hourglasses just imagining getting Sakura to squirm was enough to get her wet. Are we done? Piccolo smirked watching her, the closer to the time they were to be let out the more distracted the girl seemed to get. She still managed to absorb everything he taught her though to the point they were now sparring daily mostly to keep her focused while at the same time distracted, he was now pretty certain that once they left that all thoughts of training Sakura and Naruto would be put off at night at the very least, same will probably be said after Sakura is brought into the chamber for her run. Yes, let's go. 30. Everyone heard the bell signaling the time chamber had been opened Sakura moved to stand next to Naruto waiting to see how Hinata did and looked. No one had to wait long as Hinata walked up at pretty good pace, her purple outfit frazzled and ripped in various places, her hair long, but it was her eyes that showed how much she truly changed, gone was the timid flower that entered the chamber, while she still felt like Hinata there was confidence in her stride. She walked up to Naruto grabbed him by the collar of his cloak and pulled him into a hungry kiss that spoke of longing and lust, before Sakura could protest Hinata let Naruto go then grabbed the rosette haired girl and proceeded to do the same to her. After separating from the day's red haired girl she grabbed both their hands and started pulling them away. Naruto-kun, Sakura-chan, and I have something to do with you tomorrow afternoon, she stated. Why afternoon? Goku asked scratching his head. Because I doubt we'll get much sleep tonight. Hinata replied with a surprising dirty smirk on her face. Remember silencing jutsus, I don't need to hear my Sochi's girlfriend screaming his name in lustful moans, Kushina chirped up earning her a raised eyebrow from 18 and Mikado. Minato sighed shaking his head, while Vegeta let loose his own smirk. While they are occupied I guess we have an evening to ourselves. Kushina licked her lips, say Dan does the room my Sochi and his girlfriend's going to the only bedroom. Den shook his head, the lookout has had to house multiple people before, there are several rooms in the back you can take. Oh good I don't want my future daughter-in-law showing me up, Kushina grabbed her husband and Mikado by the arms and dragged them into the back. Kushina, is this really necessary? Minato asked. Yep, Databane. The red-haired woman chirped hearing a long sigh from Mikato along with a faint giggle. See Mikado wants it, so Minato-kun you better get ready for a long night. After the six shinobi left 18 pursed her lips, I kind of like, red. 30.